Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, most importantly, gamers all around the world, welcome to a very special edition of BA Select Start. Base. Dan, I am very happy and energetic to record this episode. I feel like I say this all the time, but this time I truly mean it when I say this is a very special episode because we are just four days away from release to what I will go on record to say the biggest video game release maybe of all time. And also we're recording on the seventh anniversary of the original game, as you pointed out. Absolutely. Today marks uh, seven years since uh, fans all over the world, much like you and I, Dan, got to witness The Last of Us in all of its glory, the first part at least. And we, One of my favorite games of all time. My favorite game of all time, without question. There is no honorary mentions. There is no just in that number one slot. If you ever ask me, I'm going to tell you Last of Us is my favorite game just because of every single perspective, whether it's storytelling, mechanics, gameplay, whatever it is, it delivers on every single level. But and a lot of these reviews seem to be suggesting that this game might take the place of the original. Very, very interesting. And I do want to get into that because... So let me lay out the format of the episode. So Dan and I today, we will be talking about uh, a few reviews from the major, you know, gaming... uh, I don't know, what is it? uh, Corporations who put out these reviews and previews for all the fans out there. We're going to be going through just a few reviews. We're not going to go through all of them. And then we actually have a very interesting second segment that we want to talk about, uh, something that one of the critics wrote about The Last of Us Part Two, and then we're going to wrap it all up by sort of just giving our last-minute final thoughts before we actually played the game. Very fair to say that maybe the next episode of BA Select Start is probably going to be a review of Last of Us 2, depending on where we are just in time and space. Um, but yeah. with all that said, Dan, if you want to go away and knock out those, uh, four or five reviews that you have now, we could do that. Absolutely. Now, obviously there's, there's more than just these. We're just doing this, this chunk for brevity. Yes. But when you've got 44 perfect scores across all of the game review companies, um, that leaves a lot of good things to be said. Now. I'm going to stick to just four perfect scores that are... uh, I'm just going to read the ones that are on there, the Last of Us game Instagram page. Yes. Four four perfects, and then the one slightly less perfect one that they uh, referenced. Yes. But let's start off with IGN. Uh, I think every, every gamer is familiar with them. Of course. So, IGN, 10 out of 10. The Last of Us Part 2 is a masterpiece that evolves the gameplay, cinematic storytelling, and rich world design of the original in nearly every way. Alright, next one, coming from The Guardian, 5 out of 5. This intense game set in a post-disaster world poses moral questions about the motivations for violence and is brilliantly acted by its human contributors. Ashley Johnson, Troy, all of them, I'm, I'm expecting consistent performances from what they gave us the first time yeah game informer 10 out of 10 i can safely say this is the best narrative game i have played i felt the loss i felt the confusion it is a game that turned me inside out with each twist of the screw interesting Obviously, that one kind of alludes to a little bit, but I mean, we also already know there's going to be some stuff that happens. Yeah, the the reveal trailer kind of alludes to that, but continue. Yeah. Uh, Sony's Big Butt, sorry, this is Telegraph, uh, 5 out of 5, and it is not about Sony's Big Butt. It's about (laughs) Sony's, Sony's Big Budget PS4 exclusive might actually surpass the achievements of its illustrious predecessor. Interesting. And then we'll go ahead and we'll jump to U.S. Gamer, the 4.5 out of 5. What a shabby score compared to the others. Uh, In this, it's not always successful, but its execution is impeccable, and its story proves an appropriate bookend to the story of Joel and Ellie. In short, it's some of Naughty Dog's best work. 
So even though that first chunk kind of talks about, eh, it misses the mark on a couple things, which is presumably why they lost half a point. Yeah. Uh, it ultimately comes back to say it's really well done. It's a good ending for these characters, and, and the company uh, the company did good. And like I, I know I, I commented on Ashley Johnson posted something on Instagram, and I just threw a little comment in there. I'm like, I, I hope you guys are proud because I'm not even involved in the game, and I'm proud of what you guys <laughs> are going to put out. Yes, absolutely. So. That That's very appropriate to say. The, the, the thing with me is that, you know, some a lot of these reviews, and so they, they talk about the graphics, the mechanics, and all that, which, which, I mean, looks on point from everything that we've seen, from the reveal trailer to the state of play to the little BTS that we've seen, it, you know, in between... Everything seems great, but I, I asked you this a while back, and I said, how do you tell a second part in regards to story? How do you tell a second part? How do you give that story to the public? Because the first one, the standards are so high, and the ending is just enough where it's like, they gave you an ending, it's not really good, it's not really bad. It's meeting everybody in the middle and saying, okay, that's the first game. But where does the story go now? And you look at these 10 out of 10 scores. You look at these 5 out of 5 scores. And in my mind, I'm like, what in God's name, like, what are we in for? What, what are all those twists and turns that everybody's talking about? What's going to happen you know, and we've talked about numerous things like possibly Joel not making it, maybe even Ellie not making it, or someone else that we've come to know maybe not making it. But yeah. it seems like with all that calculated into the equation, this game, like you said, 44 perfect scores. So, I mean, I don't know, where where is your head at in regards to all this? All of the all of the clips that we've seen, all of the tidbits, all the cutscenes, the the teases, all of it have gotten me really, really excited and really hyped. And the game looks beautiful. Yes. The game the game looks and feels like it's going to uh, rip our hearts out and <laughs> and make us cheer for our heroes to get revenge for the the wrongs that are imposed upon them because for me like you see you see the 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 love and the happiness in ellie's face in a couple of those scenes and then you see that scene when she's against the car yeah and she's holding she's holding she pulls out the gun as everybody comes out of the building and uh you see the anger and the rage and the sadness in her eyes, and you're like, "Oh man, they captured the emotion of, of, of and her humanity so well." Yeah. So I I'm so excited to see what they've got, what they've put out, and I, like I said, I I hope I hope that everybody who's worked on this, especially with all of the with with what negative press the game got, I hope that they're proud of what they accomplished because it sounds like it. It sounds like, I mean, maybe their pockets don't necessarily reflect it, but it sounds like all the hard work was worth it. Yeah, I mean, if you're a gamer, uh, specifically a PS4 gamer, and you don't see this as a big deal, then I, I really don't know what's going to um, what's gonna fill up your appetite, because... You know, we, we, we keep on seeing, you know, I believe there was a review somewhere around there, maybe, we're, we're, and I know we're going to get to this in the second segment, uh, something talking about 30 to 40 hours of gameplay. Yeah. And you look at everything that we've seen, a mix of beautiful landscapes, violence, storytelling, like that, that, that's the only thing that I'm trying to fathom is how, how did they encompass all of that into one game? Because sometimes you hear certain things like, oh, you know, we wanted to do this, but we didn't have enough time or there wasn't enough budget or there wasn't enough labor or, or whatever the deal is. But you sort of look at this thing and you're like, with all these perfect scores coming out and with all this press that it's getting, like kind of like that question of what did they do? What, what could they have done that could have 
you know, sparked up all this positive review. So, yeah. like, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I'm trying to turn something that right now in my mind is abstract, and I'm trying to turn it into concrete so that I can grasp it, because this seems like, because they, they keep on saying it, they allude to it, this is Naughty Dog's most ambitious game, this is the most hyped up game, and you know, open world, and all these features, and this and that, and in my mind it's like, how or or like how do they do all this like what are we in for and i i know i keep on saying that but that's just sort of where my mind is right now what are we are what are we all in for what what's going to happen how are we going to like after when we're done how are we going to walk out of this thing what's our reaction going to be well, well let me let me chime in for one second yeah, because i uh, i'm going i want to speak from from personal experience and and uh, i'll be honest uh, ha- having played the Kingdom Hearts games, I have never actually played Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. But uh, I I think I heard that this game may be shipped on two discs. Is that something you've heard as well? Last of Us 2? Yeah. No, not at all. Yeah, so looking here, I've got Tweak Town, uh, Push Square. It says The Last of Us Part Two will need two discs to hold its enormous story. Now, this whole two disc thing, is it confirmed or is it just sort of out there or cuz I felt like Naughty Dog would have made like an uh, announcement like and also for the first time ever because the game is so big, you'll have to experience Last of Us on two discs as as opposed to one. Is any of this well, like confirmed or is it just sort of out there? The pushsquare.com article is technically from September se- September 2019, but it says The Last of Us 2 will ship on two PS4 discs. There's one one other little story I wanted to throw out there that yes. uh, happened to me the other day. Yes. And I'm, I'm going to leave people's names out, but I think it's, it's a little funny based on this. So we opened the video by talking about, oh, well, how do we feel about this game? I... Had just, I don't remember exactly what I, what I had seen, but I had just gotten to work and I saw something about the game and I, I was I was really excited about it. And uh, we were having a visit from a a corporate person uh, that day, and, and so I'm turn I'm turned talking to one of my coworkers as we're working. And I'm I'm gushing about the game. I'm like, hey, are you familiar with this game? comes out in like four days i'm so excited it's gonna be it's gonna be super exciting i loved the first one and i turn and this corporate guy is standing right next to me just looking at me and i go oh in his face (laughs) (laughs) and uh he he just he gave me some some nice comments and then walked away but uh if that isn't enough to tell you how hyped I am for the game, that I don't even realize um, my boss's boss's bosses are standing right in front of me, uh, staring at me, gush about this game at work. Uh, I'm pretty hyped. <laughs> yes, I am as well. Fair to say that from that state of play video all the way to now, you just it's like a volcano where you feel that lava just building, 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 and just waiting for it to explode. So... Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. Uh, and, th- and I think that's the thing, too, is that with all the delays that we got, with all the teaser trailer and then six months of radio silence that we got, it's like with very minimal, they did so much in hyping up this game. And especially as of recent, I feel like right when they announced the DLC, or not, I'm sorry, not the DLC, but like the pre-orders from that moment to now, they have spaced everything out very, very well and just sporadically where they give you a little piece of information here and then maybe in about a month and a half they give you a little bit of information over here. So, yeah, they give you just enough to satiate you for the time and then you, but when that buzz starts to kind of fade a little bit, they're like, oh, hey, here's a new teaser video and you're like, what? Yeah, so again, all these years, I, like the funny thing is I can remember few years back, a good friend of mine and myself, we were talking about it. This is a few years back. We're like, yeah, man, I think maybe Last of Us comes out late 2017 or in 2018. And it's like, you think about it now and it's like, man, were we wrong? I mean, we're in 2020 and we're just getting the game in four days. So granted, towards the tail end, there was a little bit of circumstance involved in all that, but 
important part is that we know for a fact that the game is being shipped out as we speak and it's going to be in our hands in just four days time so a very very exciting time to be a gamer right now i think with a game yeah. like this coming out and just all the attention that it's getting i can't wait i truly cannot wait all, all of this fanfare obviously comes with uh some uh some negativity um because you've got situations like uh over here on Forbes.com, they say two warnings about the Last of Us Part Two review scores. Now we've talked about the fact that the scores, forty-four perfect. I don't know exactly how many total scores there are. Yeah. But forty-four perfect still sounds like a lot. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but then I was breezing through this, and the the first thing that they talk about, they go first off, the review embargo itself is quite strict. Now what they're referring to here is that apparently. In these reviews, the the reviewers are pretty much cut off. Uh, it sounds like a little bit over halfway through the game, but they're not allowed to talk at all in their reviews, uh, at least not in any sort of concrete detail about the conclusion or the climax of the actual story. Yes. So uh, I don't know if these people are factoring in the end of the game to their reviews or if they even got to play it i don't i don't know um but you've got that and then the fact that you've got uh second and arguably more importantly some reviewers even those who ultimately like the game found the game found the violence extreme to the point of questioning whether they could even finish playing the game since this game is somewhere between 25 and 30 hours long yeah you can see how this could be a problem says forbes so, yeah, apparently the game, if you haven't already gathered from all of the teaser teaser footage and such, it's going to be gory. Uh, so I then pose the question to you, Sean. How do you feel about that? Does that change your opinion? Does that give you any reluctance? Absolutely not, because I know it, this was maybe either last episode or the episode before that where you said on a scale of 1 to 10, how violent do you think this game is going to be? And I told you back then, I said, I think it's going to be a 10. It has to be a 10 because you can't have a game like Last of Us have an uncharted vibe where it's it's punch kick, but it's not violent, violent. You You, you can't have that. It's not Last of Us without that. And for those people saying, oh, you know, that might have been too much or I don't know, I, I don't know if this is a feature or if they kept this from the first game. But I know in the first game, there was an option to turn the gore and the blood off. So mm -hmm. if you find it too violent, maybe midway through, you can go to your option tab and you can turn that thing off. And there you go. That's going to take away the problem. But in, in my mind, I'm thinking, no, this is what Last of Us is. For people to say this was too violent or whatever, I mean, I hate to say it, but if that's how you feel, put the controller down. It, it's, I mean, I don't want to boil it down to this, but it's a zombie game. You should be prepared. Yeah. You should be prepared for a lot of gore, a lot of blood in a game where you're dealing with undead human beings. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to sound sarcastic when I say this, but red flags... When it says post-apocalyptic, infected, yeah. fungus, I mean... <laughs> All of those things indicate you should be prepared for monsters and killing. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, what do you think? What, what do you take away from that? Um, I am not remotely affected by that because one of, one, one of my... Uh, one of the other games that I... I wouldn't, I'm hesitant to call it one of my favorite games, but I really enjoyed playing it was Dead Island. Yeah. And I know we I've I've brought that game up a couple of times while we've talked about this one, but the fact of the matter is that you straight up could have a katana, a melee weapon, and a zombie could be coming at you and you just swing at the right time and it just lops his head clean off. Yeah. And then you look at the ground, like you can look down, and you see the head next to the body and blood just on the ground. And you're like yeah, that's pretty cool. And then you go and you start killing more zombies that are trying to eat you. It A lot of it is about self-defense, but some of it is also you're in a lawless world 
with people who may or may not have just killed somebody that you severely care you care about yeah and you then have to face the moral quandary of well if i'm in a world where nobody is going to police these people and give them the justice for what they did wrong maybe i should do it myself right i don't think there's anything wrong with that in that context that's the big thing is the context a few things that i was going to throw in there was number one the rating score that's literally on the the case of the game, which says rated M for mature, 17 and up. I mean, that tells you. We're not talking about a rated E game for everyone. I mean, you you, you can tell by, by the scoring of a game of where the game is sort of at and if you should be playing it or not. Yeah. And secondly, I, I brought this up right before we were recording when I said, it's only pixels. Like, nobody's actually getting hurt in this game. And... I'm going to bring this example up again one more time just because we've talked about this this particular genre of video game in the series as well. But it's like looking somebody in the face and going, you know wrestling is fake, right? And again, it follows that same notion of I'm not watching wrestling to watch an actual fight. I'm just I'm watching to be entertained, to suspend disbelief for just a few hours. And... Yeah. Back to your point, it's like the same thing for Last of Us. We're not playing this game to see like how much violence it contains or what's the moral compass of each character. We're playing it because this is a series and a group of characters that we have followed for seven years at this point, And we want to see where their next adventure is taking them. And yeah, and I, and I think it's it's definitely not that we're we're sitting down to play the game. Most of us, I'm assuming, we're not sitting down to play the game in order to kill people. We're sitting down to play the story. Yeah, that's at least my mentality. Anytime I pick up a video game, is I'm a I, I'm, I'm, I have to have mentioned this before on the on the podcast. I'm a very story driven gamer. Yes. And so that's why I like things like Legend of Dragoon, Kingdom Hearts, Last of Us, Uncharted, because they're story-driven. And so stuff like Call of Duty, um, honestly, that's, I think, the biggest one. Things like Call of Duty don't call out to me too much, because while they might have a campaign mode, I'm not exactly a warmonger. Um, so I don't, I, I'm not drawn to that game. I guess I'm more of like a fantasy RPG type of person. Yeah. So plugging me into a zombie game or a fictitious silly game where fa Final Fantasy characters and Disney characters mesh is more up my alley. But we're not sitting down to go, man, I want to spend 25 to 30 hours killing folks. So with that, we finally come down to the third segment of this particular episode, which is Final thoughts, sentiments, questions, observations, conjunctions, anything that you want to throw in uh, four days before we experience what seems to be the, the ultimate video gaming adventure, now is your time, Dan. I'm so infinitely excited for this game that uh, if it arrives... Because I think I'm, I think I'm scheduled off the day that the game is released. There if it are. arrives that day... Um, I, I will absolutely play that for at least, probably at least two hours and I'll probably lose track of time. So by two hours, I mean seven hours, Yes. but we'll see. <laughs> um, I, I can't wait to delve back into, uh, the world of, uh, Joel and Ellie and follow Troy and Ashley on this, uh, journey to bring the story to, uh, to a satisfying conclusion because I have every... I have every faith in their performances and in uh, Neil's directive vision, as well as the entire team who worked tirelessly, tirelessly to make news and uh, finish this game. Uh, that they're they're gonna give us a solid product that they're gonna be happy with, and that that we're gonna be happy with also. Yes, very well said. My final sentiments is that, again, we keep on going back to it. Seven years ago, this adventure was sort of dropped in our laps, and we got to experience the first game and the DLC and all the teasers and previews for the second one up to this point. And 
we are going to experience, I thought Uncharted 4 was like a big deal, and I'm sorry to say it pales into comparison when you put it right next to Last of Us 2. I think that maybe, just maybe, Last of Us 2 is going to, it's going to outperform the first one. Because we talked about it being such a big game and the environment and the whole two-disc theory that we have going on and where we can take these characters and how much detail is put into each and every moment of the game. It's a big adventure and in four, we're just, in four days time we're going to be experiencing in the second part and like you said Dan, probably the, the conclusion of this adventure and... I'm excited, and I think that it's finally time for us to experience it after all this time waiting. And I have fair to say that again, the next time when you guys catch us, it's going to be review time for The Last of Us, and we're going to be able to just say what we're feeling whenever the time comes. Obviously, there's a few days left. You probably can't get your hands on the Ellie edition probably can't get your hands on the collector's edition at this point unless you're paying a fancy premium over on eBay. <laughs> but you can probably still pre-order uh, the deluxe edition or the standard edition. Be sure to pick up your game, your copy, uh, for 6 2020 of The Last of Us 2 and uh, join us and join uh, the entire production team on this journey uh, in this final chapter in the story of these characters that we love so much. Yes, and in the midst of all that, in all seriousness, while you are going to pick up your game, just remember to stay safe out there because, uh, ironically, we're talking about a post-pandemic game. We are in the middle of a pandemic in real life as well. So be safe out there when you're going to get your copies. Wear masks at all times. Maintain distance between yourself and others. And... We'll see you guys on the next episode, but always remember and never forget, whenever you're in doubt, just turn down the treble and crank up the bass. We'll touch base with you guys on the next episode.